Welcome back to the channel, guys. This is Mercy Montez, M U R S E M O N T E Z. I know why you're here. The title, right? I hope it's interesting, and I hope you watch the whole video through. Then we're gonna see if this vaccine is really like as successful as it's mentioned to be, or is it a bust? Let's go. Baby, baby. All right, so right off the bat, I'm a little hungry, y'all. Uh, so I got me something to drink. Juice, and I got some pizza and I got some ranch because you know, pizza and ranch do go together. But anyway, um, I was looking on ABC News and I ended up seeing this thing about clinical trials for uh, COVID 19. Okay, and so it began in the University of Oxford, uh, which, if you didn't know, that's in England. And before I get too deep into it, you're gonna see me look down, look up. I wrote some notes, I'm gonna read it. You know, natural way. So bear with me. But from what I've read, they created this trial that was going to test the effectiveness of a possible vaccine. Right? They don't even know if it's going to be successful. But I guess that's the the whole idea of having a human trial. Right? So. They said it may take, it normally takes 12 to 18 months to have a full-fledged vaccine. So we're going to see how this one does. Uh, it, it states that those who have already been affected with the virus or are currently dealing with it, they're giving those people the option to join in this human trial. And I, I know that's going to be England, but I believe others are doing human trials in different areas or different countries, different states. So if you know about it, and unfortunately, you if you have been affected by the virus, uh, the opportunity is your, it's yours to try it. Do I suggest it? I'm not really sure. Probably you gotta wait to those, to those other ones who wanna try it, try it, and then see how that goes. And if you feel like that's something that you wanna do, then try the human trial. But I, I wrote down an honorable mention here, like I don't know this person, but apparently this person is very important. Uh, Health Security, uh, Matt Hancock, stated, stated that there has been uh, $65 million worth of funding to this project. So, you know, I really hope that this is a success, especially uh, looking at the amount of money that's been put into it. Uh, they, it seems as if, you know, scientists have the, the, uh, the funds, the spendable funds they, they need to do this project, but, uh, Will it be a success? It's still uh, up for grabs. Like nobody really knows whether this is going to be a success or not. But there's just been a lot of money funded into this project, so hopefully it's not in vain. Uh, for, from this uh, website, from ABC News, it says that another trial uh, at London's Imperial University has been started. Well, it will start in the beginning of June. So not only do you have Oxford University and their human trials. You also have uh, London's Imperial University and their human trials. And that's going to start in June. So you have one that's started already now, and you have another one to look forward to in June. So I guess the real question is when they, they do these trials, which university is going to be the one that's more effective? That's really the question. You know, which, if you, if you wanted to join in that, the question is which university uh, and which vaccines they choose to use is going to be more effective for the people that are choosing to be injected by the vaccine. Um, I'm not gonna say what it's called. I'm just gonna have it pop up on the screen right here. And you can try to say that yourself. So it's C-H-A-D-O-X-1. Um, and then you have N, COVID-19. So. You, you try to spell it. Maybe that's maybe that's language in England or something. I'm not sure, but yeah, attempt that yourself if you want to. Well, more things that I wrote. Got oh my God! Too. That's 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 rude, right? So I won't do that. But anyway, so Oxford University is stating that the efficacy or how efficient 
this vaccine will be, hopefully it can be determined uh, sometime in the fall of 2020, this year. Maybe that's uh, a jump. Maybe that's too soon. We don't know. But I guess you see how to trust what ABC News says about what Oxford University says about this vaccine. And I mentioned earlier that it normally takes 12 to 18 months to actually have a legitimate vaccine. So they are kind of pushing the fold here, but when you look at the amount of money that's being thrown into it, you can kind of see why, you know, a lot of times money will make things move a lot faster. Uh, if you wanted to know, I included the fact that this is actually a collaboration between uh, University's Jenner Institute and Oxford Vaccine Group Clinical Teams. So it's two uh, people or two um, facilities merged together to try to see if they can come up with a vaccine. All right, two heads make better than one. In this case, two universities make better than one. You know what I'm saying? Never can be too short. So you need probably just more. Just you know, basically the more heads on this thing, the more scientists on this uh, coronavirus nineteen vaccine, the more brains you can get on this thing. Maybe the quicker we can come up with a vaccination. So I think is what they're trying to hit at. You know, but I guess you should find some uh, gratitude knowing that there's more than 80 vaccines currently in development globally and several therapeutic drugs to treat the noble coronavirus. So that, I mean, maybe that's a good thing because you never know who may actually have something that could really do some good in terms of those who have been affected by this virus. Because I know uh, a lot of people have been, you know, a lot of deaths have been uh, mentioned in my previous videos when I, when I gave you those total cases for one from the website Wordometer. Those are real, man. People are really out here dying and getting sick with pneumonia. I guess it really happening, right? So that's what that's why I, said, I feel like it's a good thing that scientists are trying to come up with a vaccine. But I'm not really too big on doing human trials. Like I probably wouldn't do the injection myself. Um, I'm the type to probably wait for somebody to do it and then if it works, uh, then I'm in on it. Um, but yeah, I mean that's that's really it. But I guess I, I do, before I end it, I do want to add that now, uh, since they don't have a vaccine and many of the hospitals, uh, nursing homes and what have you, they, they, can't, they can't necessarily treat the virus. They're treating symptoms, if that makes sense. I'm a medical professional, you know what I mean. Uh, I mentioned earlier videos, the coronavirus has certain symptoms that are attached to it. Not like the flu, not like the cold. And so those symptoms that you have are what we are treating. So that's what you, well, that's what's pretty much going on right now. So hopefully vaccines come up that you can actually give, you know, an injection for this particular strand of coronavirus. Even though, you, you, if you didn't know, you run, you have a coronavirus or you, I guess you, you become infected with coronavirus all the time if you didn't know, right? The common cold is a strand of coronavirus. But this strand here, is a lot different because it's highly contagious and can be spread in so many different ways. So that's why I feel like it's very important that they not let up on this, but continue to work harder to find some type of answer to what's going on nowadays. Because it's very important. And if you think about it, think about the fact that you know many facilities in many uh, countries and states here in the United States are reopening. Do you think that's too soon? Do you think that they should wait, continue the stay home order until more um, cases have been resolved? Or do you think that it's time to reopen and get back, get the economy booming? But is the econ economy really going to boom if the virus is still rampant, is still active? Think about it. Now, I mean, there's two scenarios to the situation. Granted, you know, you think about the different people you've seen that are affected by COVID. Uh, for those who are medical professionals, you think about what you've seen at the hospital, what you've seen at the prisons, the nursing homes, uh, psych hospitals, and what have you. You know, for them, it's not a good idea for it to reopen because they're still suffering. But then again, you look at the business perspective, they're losing money. People are going out of business. People are losing their jobs because they can't work because of the uh, stay at home order. And not everybody can go home and work from home. Some people actually have to go in to work. 
So you have, you know, your, your bartenders, your barbershops. Not all um, restaurants were open at the time of this stay-at-home order. So those people lost their jobs. In effect, they can't pay their bills. So it's, it's two ways to look at this coin. It's always two sides to the coin. And these, are the, these are the two sides. But, you know, I'll let you decide. You decide which is better. I, on the one hand, uh, I'm not going to take sides. I'm going to be on a neutral side. I, I just see it from both sides, right? So that's pretty much the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you've been a little educated on the current situation of the coronavirus. You know, scientists are trying to come up with a vaccine. How soon that will be, I'm not sure. So in the meantime, stay as healthy as possible. Continue to build your immune system. Continue to be aware of your surroundings. Continue to wear your mask. Continue to change your gloves. That's very important. Always change your gloves if you're going to wear gloves out in the public. Stay safe, guys.